All right, so Josh, how you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great. How are you, Jeremy? Good, good. I'm well. I'm well. So I wanted to catch up this morning and talk about um, Groveland. You just closed on a sale there, industrial property, and it was a uh, it was a business owner who sold his company and came to us because he had the uh, the industrial building where he was housing his company left over and wanted to to get rid of it. Like you said, he he owned this company and he owned the real estate together. He operated his company out of the building and then ended up selling the company. And so he was stuck with the real estate. The lease was ending for the company. That company was then purchased by another company and they were planning on moving out of the property. So he was going to be stuck with vacant property in about four, six months from the time we took it on. Uh, and so basically he had attempted to market it himself mm -hmm. and was mm -hmm. just getting bogged down with a lot of tire kickers and low offers and, and was just unhappy with uh, the market and how they were, they're coming to him. So he wanted to, to get some professional help. And so we took him on as a, as a qualified seller. We met with him. We brought him through our process and determined that he was a qualified seller. Um, so we, so we the, the, so what you're saying is uh, the guy had, so this guy had, had sold his company, um, the company that bought his company signed a lease for say six months while they transitioned the, the operations out of the building. And then he mm -hmm. had, so he was facing a looming vacancy. He mm -hmm. no longer needed the building. So he tried to market the building himself, find buyers and ended up with a lot of tire kickers People were coming in, making lowball offers, really spinning his mm -hmm. wheels and wasting his time. Would you mm -hmm. say that? Would you say that the sale of this this piece of real estate in Groveland was critical to his his kind of retirement plan? It was. It was. He was going to be stuck with an asset with negative cash flow, and he he wanted to sell the property to be able to retire with his wife. Actually. Okay, uh, so it was, was a, uh, interesting. So he had so he had successfully sold the company, which is not easy to do. And then he mm -hmm. had the building left over, needed to dispose of that so he could transition the equity. This was a big deal for him and get mm -hmm. get as much capital out of the property as possible so he could retire with his wife. Mm -hmm. exactly. So after trying to do it himself, he hired our team and you spearheaded mm -hmm. the effort to take them through our sale process. So tell me what happened when, when you went to market. So we went to market and we, we had a lot of good activity. There were a few low ball offers, but essentially we, we sourced four offers on the property. It, all of them were above what he was actually looking to get. Um, and we ended up selling on a deal with, with a direct user. And during that time, th there was some difficulties and that deal ended up falling through. Through our continuous marketing period, we were able to set up a new deal within 30 minutes of the old one falling apart. So and 30 minutes. So within 30 minutes of buyer number one backing out, mm -hmm. we had the deal under contract with buyer number two. We did. We did. And so we marketed the property for a month before it was under agreement, fell through, put it back under offer in 30 minutes, and then we started uh, proceeding towards PNS. Okay, so then from that point where you executed the PNS on the sale to when he closed, how, how long was that? It was June, July, August, three months. Till three course. months. Okay, so within ninety days, he ha he was paid out on a, on his excess real exactly. estate. And mm -hmm. in terms of the sale price, so the the high to low, he had gotten offers on his own. What was what was a typical offer price he was seeing in the market for his building? When he was trying to market it himself, he was seeing offers from seven hundred thousand. Someone offered him five hundred thousand. And they're all under a million, which he wasn't too happy with. 
Okay, and then and then he ultimately closed at what number with us? He ultimately he ultimately closed with us at one point two five. So one point two five. So he ended up selling about call it five hundred five hundred thousand to seven hundred fifty thousand over the kind of low ball time wasting mm-hmm. people that were coming to him. And maybe they sensed that he was, you know, kind of motivated, not in the right way to mm-hmm. exit the building because he had sold his company and was maybe he was showing some of that to the market that he was nervous and they were mm-hmm. taking advantage of that. So having us mm-hmm. run the process and be his inter- intermediary and representing him, we're able to protect his interest from the market, seeing those things and then negotiate the highest highest value. So an extra half a million in his retirement with his wife, big deal for this guy, right? Big yeah. deal, big deal. Yeah. Big deal. First time big seller, deal. very nervous. I think some people sense that, try and take advantage of that. And he, mm-hmm. you know, he, he was scared of making a mistake because this was a significant transaction for him. So this was his yeah. retirement and he didn't want to, to mess that up. Yeah, so it's not uncommon. So we see one of the primary reasons why people end up selling a piece of commercial real estate is because they sold, closed, or relocated their company. And this was exactly one of those reasons why. He's not a professional commercial real estate investor. He doesn't do this every year or three years or five years. Um, this is the kind of thing where he has a facility that is is now surplus and he needs to sell it, but it goes into the, the whole picture of maximizing his returns, getting as much money out as possible because this is a direct investment for this gentleman and making sure that he realized the full market value of the property was, was essential to him feeling confident about a sale. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Awesome. Well, thanks for, thanks for tuning in and just give me an update on, on Groveland. I'm happy to share mm-hmm. it. And if anybody has any questions about the deal, feel free to reach out to us here at the office. Um, you can visit us at mansardcre.com and uh, you know subscribe to our YouTube channel and stay up to date. We can, we'll keep you up to date on what's going on with the latest commercial real estate sales trends in the Boston area. Thanks. Mm-hmm.